Hi everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webcast, How to Automate Your Warehouse. My name is Kaylin Hensley, Marketing Coordinator with GSI. I'm also very pleased to welcome our main presenter, Dathan Goff. Dathan is a pre-sales consultant at RF Smart and has worked with hundreds of companies around the world to evaluate their warehouse processes. Dathan's expertise is pinpointing pain points and coaching companies on the various ways to apply technology to improve their warehouse operations. Now before we get started, I wanted to give you a chance to review our Safe Harbor Statement. Now for a quick overview of today's meeting, which will last about 60 minutes. First, we would like to take a moment to go over a couple of housekeeping items, as well as provide a brief company overview. Then I will turn it over to Dathan to get into our main presentation, which will last about 40 minutes. Next, we will take a minute to go over upcoming educational events, and then we will wrap up with a 10 minute Q&A session. If you would like to submit a question, you can do so through the questions panel at the bottom of the GoToWebinar console window located on the right side of your screen. Please note that questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. So if you would like to minimize your GoToWebinar console during the presentation, just click the right facing arrow key on the top left of the console. Clicking the left arrow key will return the console so that you can input your questions. And now I would like to give you a brief overview of GSI. GSI is a full service NetSuite consulting organization. We were founded in 2004 and now have over 100 employees. We have offices nationwide and are recognized on the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies in the US. GSI specializes in project consulting, managed services and other services with all of our services backed with 100% guarantee. GSI also provides a broad spectrum of business, functional, and technical consulting services for Oracle JD Edwards, Oracle NetSuite, Oracle Cloud, Salesforce, and other enterprise applications. We also offer an extensive array of cloud hosting solutions for Oracle Cloud, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and JDE Cloud9. And now I would like to turn things over to Dathan for our main presentation and demo. Hey, Dathan, if we could just have you unmute yourself for us so that we can get started on our presentation. I think the audio is good now. I'm um, sorry for the struggle there. Um, thank you, Kaylin. And again, everyone, my name is Dathan Goff. I'm a solution consultant for the RF Smart team. Um, just kind of a, an introduction of what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a couple of slides really to help you build the case on why mobile data collection can be of value for you. Uh, once we've gone through some of those slides, I'll jump out and I'll actually demonstrate the product for you and give you an even better understanding of what the solution looks like <clears throat> and some of those value points that we can bring to the table. <clears throat> so with that said, let's jump in. Um, the first thing I'll do is I'll talk a little bit about our company. So just as an introduction, um, 
RF Smart, we're based in Jacksonville, Florida. You can see we were founded in 1982. So we've been in the ecosystem and in the industry for a long time. Um, our company continues to grow. Uh, right now it says 135 employees. I'm pretty sure that number's jumped in the last couple of weeks as we continue to hire. Um, but another nice thing about us is that we do have offices globally. So it doesn't matter where you're located. Um, we have local resources uh, to some degree and are happy to assist you and support you in any means necessary. Um, and on the right side of this screen, you can see some of the accolades uh, with the Sweet Cloud Suite app of the year and how we're a native Suite app with Oracle and NetSuite. Uh, but the biggest thing on this is this bottom bullet point that we employ warehousing experts. That's one thing we hear over and over again from our customers is the appreciation of just the knowledge that our consultants have and the ability to, to meet the needs of their um, businesses. <clears throat> so really this is the start of that building of the case. So with mobile data collection and supply chain, these are the things that you're looking to do. You want to increase accuracy, uh, the uh, worker productivity, and even the supply chain visibility. So as I go through, you're going to see how we do these things um, along the way. So what's stopping you? There's several things. Let me punch through these. Oh, I got a little ahead of myself there. Uh, what are stopping you? These are some of the things that that might stop you today. So you're you're from growing, I should say. Uh, so time wasted, locating inventory, lack of traceability. These are the two of the bigger things. Uh, when those two things are happening, then the bottom one comes into play, that decreased customer satisfaction. Maybe you're misshipping things or things aren't getting there in a timely fashion. So we bounce through. This is where we come in, using that mobile te technology to take control. So you can see down below uh, through planning, receiving, inventory, fulfillment, and even production. Those are places and things that we can help with. Where? So this is just a different layout of, of essentially that same slide, uh, and you can kind of see it from a, a visual perspective, uh, whether it's the inbound dock, the manufacturing side, these are some of the transactions that you can look for for our smart to take care of for you and make mobile uh, so that you can get those efficiencies and the real time aspect of it built in. So the types of mobile devices, this is always a hot topic for everyone we have devices or we need devices, what are our options? So you can see here, there's all kinds of options as far as whether you want a ruggedized handheld, maybe you're not a ruggedized environment, you could use a lighter handheld. Um, that's perfectly capable as well, all the way down to printers. So there's a plethora of options for printers out there. We have a team that specifically, uh, their job is to analyze your business and determine the level of ruggedness or whatever it may be of your devices. Um, so making you making it a cheaper option, if that's at all possible for you, or if you need that rugged environment uh, device, we can provide that for you as well. So with this, you're going to see with the mobile data collection, you're going to get the who, when, and how. So who received a shipment? When did they receive it? Who put it away? When and where? Where's the big issue here? Being able to trace that inventory. And you can see the list kind of goes on and on, all the way down to uh, something that's really not here, but on the manufacturing side, collecting that labor, the time that it takes to, to complete a particular operation at a work center. These are all of the types of things that being mobile allows you to collect and create those metrics that you'll need on the backside to report against that and make better business decisions in the future. So, let's power through. So how does this affect inventory accuracy? Well, it's just that it's going to give you that capability to get closer to that 100% accuracy. Uh, so as you go through the transactions, as we'll see in a minute, there's going to be validations with each screen. So you're going to know uh, whether that transaction is actually feasible for, before it's done. So there's not going to be any writing it on paper, taking it back to a computer and doing that manual data entry. Um, we've got some use cases or some, some numbers associated to that coming up, but these are some of the things that you'll find uh, that we provide value. Okay, um, so inventory accuracy, these are just some statistics as far as what we can do for you. Uh, so, you know, this is an example company with 60 million in revenue, uh, you know, the value and reduced safety stock. So when you're having, to, when you have inventory discrepancies or inaccuracies, you're gonna have to maintain a higher level of safety stock. We're gonna provide you the ability to lower that um, and in turn, help your bottom line. Okay. So knowing these types of things, what your workers are spending time on, you know that today, um, 
going forward, that could completely change with mobile data collection. So I mentioned before that writing down and keying in transactions, the walking back and forth, that's all done in real time with the mobile devices. So you can look at the improved buy side um, and it speaks for itself. All right, oh, here we go. So here's another uh, piece of information on this. So we talked a little bit before with the same company, uh, but now if you look at the annual savings based on just data entry. So this is that productivity side. You're not being very product, uh, productive if you're having to type in things manually. So giving yourself that av um, ability to do a different, additional tasks or different things, uh, you can see the annual savings that could be presented to you. Okay, so this slide actually is a little bit more hard data for you. So these are some actual customers of ours, and these are some of the bottom line things that they've added because of using RF Smart. Uh, so whether it's uh, decreasing shipping errors or less time on receiving and counting procedures, um, you can see that there's a lot of things that can be of value for you. Keep going here, and I think this is gonna be the last before we actually jump into some of the actual software presentation. Uh, but these are some accolades and things about our product that are very, very important. So the first one is that we're built inside of NetSuite. I'm going to show you more of what we mean by that, but the real value is just the speed of transactions and the real-time uh, transaction times as they occur. Um, the second one, the no servers or code on the device, you've got a cloud ERP, so it makes sense to have a cloud solution for the mobile as well. So there's no need for an IT department to manage any servers or any code on the devices and so forth. The cycle counting, the picking and counting at the same time. So we saw on that previous screen the 63% um, saving on um, productivity because of counting and things along those lines. This is where that comes in. You no longer have to shut down your operations to count. You can continue to pick for sales orders, receive purchase orders in, do all of those daily activities and do your cycle counts at the same time. Um, and we've hit on this next one, but then the last one. The whole concept of bins, whether you use bins or don't use bins, having the data collection and being able to create those real-time transactions is gonna speed up your process. The nice thing of knowing that we work either or, or with any of these three types of bins turned on or levels of bins turned on is nice because you can actually start with a crawl, walk, run approach. So if today you don't have bins, but it's something that you've looked into and you want to have for that inventory accuracy, we can grow with you in that regards. Okay, so let's bounce out, um, get to the fun part, the part that I'm, I'm better at than the presentation of slides. Um, so as I jump out now, what you're seeing is NetSuite on the left, and then you see RF Smart on the right. Um, we've talked about that ability to see who's doing what, um, things along those lines. We're capturing all that information as you perform these transactions. What I mean by that is we have an RF Smart transaction table, and it doesn't collect a lot. What it collects is who the user is logged into a device what transaction or what function they're executing, and then even the time elapsed. So when did they start that transaction? When did they end that transaction? That's gonna give me a lot of information about what's happening in my facility. So if you care about productivity um, or efficiency type reports, you can build those now. Another thing that I've found nice about it is just a research capability. So you can see in my system, I've got a little transaction table to where I can query by user uh, the function and even the date that it's created, and it brings back a list of all of those. So if I ever needed to research who did what, this is a fast and easy way to find that. And then up top, um, you can see a nice little report up here just to see my transaction count by user to see who maybe my more uh, active users are in the system that day. On the right with RF Smart, um, it's important for you to know this device is in my hand. So as I go through these transactions, when I scan, I'm really scanning. Um, I've got a sheet of barcodes in front of me. But the reason I like to show it this way is for you. So you can see what a day in the life actually looks like. These menu options, as I go into them, this is exactly what your users will see. Um, the one thing that could differ is the menu. So you can see as I kind of scroll around, I've got a lot of transactions here. But we have the ability to pare this menu down based on the role of the user in NetSuite. So think of it as that additional layer of permissions or security. So if Joe logs in, Joe only has permissions or has a specific role that only has permissions for four transactions. That's all he'll ever see. Uh, where that comes import, into play and is really important is for counting or for adjustment type transactions. 
it can reduce shrinkage knowing that you have that capability to restrict who has uh, access to those specific functions. Okay, so let's jump in. I'm gonna start, we're gonna go through some receiving, uh, picking of sales orders, uh, the put away on the receiving side, and I'll actually show the counting perspective as well. Uh, and then towards the end, we'll add, open it up, and if you guys have any questions, we're happy to take those. So as I jump in, you'll see purchase order receiving, and I'll kind of use my mouse to, to navigate and narrate for you, uh, but you see two options. And we show these two, I show them because they actually uh, transact a little bit differently and depending on your business you might like either or. So both of them perform the purchase order receipt. However, the scan item gives me the ability to scan for every quantity that I want to receive. Whereas the regular version there is a scan of the item and type in a quantity. Uh, so depending upon your item types and so forth, you might like one or the other. We give you the capability to do both. <clears throat> and if I scroll down, you'll see that same with sales order picking. We have this for counting. Um, all of these transactions, you have those capabilities to choose which one you prefer. I'm going to show the regular purchase order receiving, though. So as I use my finger to select that option, notice it comes to this particular screen. So it's prompting me for that purchase order number. If a vendor sends in a packing slip, a lot of times they're going to have your PO number or your requisition number on it. That's fantastic. You can type that here. So I can click in that and begin to type. Um, <clears throat> if it's barcoded, even better. A quick scan will do. We do give you a third option though with that load purchase orders button. So if I click on that, you'll see that it brings up a list of purchase orders for me. So this is a list of purchase orders that are in a status that can be received. So they're not pending approval, they're not pending billing, um, they're pending receipt to some degree. Uh, so I could select directly from here and if I need help, I can sort these a little different. So I can click on that vendor or that PO number and it'll resort these for me if I need to group them for ease of use to find a particular purchase order. So I'm scanning, so I scanned a purchase order number that I had barcoded here, and as I do, notice it brings in these particular items. I'll open that up in NetSuite as well, just so you can see. It's a one-to-one, -one. you see the status there, <clears throat> but we see the three items and the quantities and so forth. That's exactly what we see on the device. One thing that you'll notice as we go through, um, and if you don't notice, you will now, is that we actually do a two-part receipt. So in a world where you have bins turned on, um, you can turn this into two process or two functions for the same process. So one is to receive it in, and then the second step is to put it away. Physically, that's generally the way people do things. So as I go through, it won't prompt for that bin number that I'm receiving it into. However, we've got it defaulted here. So you can designate a preferred, um, or not a preferred, but a designated bin for receiving. So a default receipt bin, uh, we'll put it directly there. Or if you, tr if you prefer that preferred bin route to where you receive it in and it goes straight to the preferred bin, we can configure it to where it's one step as well. And then the third option, if you're not using bins at all, that's okay as well because we'll just receive it into the location and then it's available to sell. So you'll know that part, so it won't prompt me for that. But as I go through and get ready to receive, I have a couple of options. So it's prompting me for the item up top. I could scan that if it's barcoded whether that's my item number, so 10, 10, 40, 40, 50, 10, I could scan that. Or if it's the vendor's UPC and you have that correlated on the item record, we could scan that. We'll cross-reference it for you. Um, but the third option is for those who don't have everything barcoded or it's not barcoded coming in. I can just use my finger to select the appropriate line that I want to receive. So I did that there. I selected the 10, 10 line, um, utilizing the touch screen capabilities of the device. So now it comes in and it prompts me for uh, the quantity. So you can see up top there's information around the purchase order line. We can bring in thumbnail images if visual validations are useful for, for your uh, workers. But then down below we give a list of buttons that can help. Um, so the first one is this complete button. So if you wanted to do a receive all function, instead of having to click in that text box and type your 50, you could select that complete button and it'll populate 50 in there for you. The other is the print labels. So if I click on this, you'll see I have the ability to designate a printer and tell it the number of labels I'd like to print. Maybe I need 50 labels for 50 eaches, or maybe I just need two. Um, I can tell it that. As far as what goes on that label, that's up to you. Um, so most people generally put the item number, a description, and a barcode of that item number. You can add anything you want to as long as it's correlated to that item record inside of NetSuite for that particular item. And the last one, is the update UPC button. So um, inside of NetSuite, there's the field for the UPC. And if I click on this, you'll see that I've got one assigned to this item, 
But if I needed to update that, I could. Or if there wasn't a, one assigned to that item, maybe it's a new item coming into stock, I could scan that vendor's UPC and make that correlation directly from the device. Okay, so back to this screen with the collect quantity. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna receive a partial here. So I'm gonna tell it 45 instead of the 50. When I click the next button, you see it comes back to this screen. That line actually turned yellow and moved to the bottom. So this is some more visual validation that you would have as a user. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna receive the candy next. This is a lot controlled item. So I specifically put just a standard inventory item, a lot controlled and a serialized item on this purchase order so you can see that how RF Smart behaves uh, when those items are needed to be transacted. So since this one's lot controlled, it's prompting me for that lot number. I could type that if I'm recycling the vendor's lot numbers and it's barcoded, I could just give that a scan. So if I do that here, you see it passes through. On that item record, if you have it to collect expiration dates, if that's flagged and that's a new lot number, we'll prompt the user for that. In this case, it either one wasn't a, a new lot number or two didn't have the flag selected. Uh, so it passed straight through to the collect quantity screen. And from here, I can plug in that quantity that I'm receiving. So if I received a partial, it would loop back, ask me for the next lot number. If I received the full quantity, you'll see that it loops back out. Now, back on this screen, we see three different colors to represent the three different lines and the statuses of each. So you've got green, which means I received it all, all 15. Yellow is a partial. And then red, that means I haven't received any. So it comes up as such. The nicer thing about this, the colors are nice, but the best thing is the, the sorting of it. Um, so the red will always be on top, yellow in the middle, and green on bottom. And the reason being is we want to keep your point of reference at the top of the screen. So if you're scanning or actually using your finger to select it and you have a 20 line PO, we don't want you to have to scroll to the bottom to find the next line to receive. Okay, so the last one is serialized. So if I go in to select it, you'll notice that it prompts me for those serial numbers. So here, instead of entering a quantity, this quantity is always gonna be one. I need to input that serial number. Whether it's through typing or scanning, it doesn't matter. So if I scan a couple here, you see the serial number that I just scanned is down below. I scan the next one. And then the third one, once I scan it, it'll loop back out. Notice the remove button. If I scan the wrong value, a lot of times serial number barcodes will be next to another barcode. It's as simple as clicking remove um, to change that. Okay, so we're to the back end of this and we're gonna just pretend that this was partially, they sent me a, a partial on this. So when I'm done, I can press the submit button as I do on the device, we'll get a little green success bar at the bottom. That's letting me know that we've completed that transaction in NetSuite. So now if we look, it's pending receipt with no um, item receipt record, but as we refresh this web form, that status will change. So there we go. It's now pending billing and partially received. And if I look out at the related record, you'll see the quantities actually reflect exactly what was done on the device. So instead of being 50 here, it's 45. So this is part of that real time, not having to go back with the paper trail saying that they only sent me 45 or 50, it's instantly done from the device perspective. If I take a, take a deeper look, let's look at the serialized ones. You see that those serial numbers and even the lot numbers, whatever we collected is now in the system with those quantities in that designated bin on receipt. Okay, so the next part of the receipt process is the put away. So as I go to that, notice the function here on the device called bin put away. I'll go into it. And the first thing it wants to know is what's the item you're putting away. Um, this is just a bin transfer with the from information defaulted for me. Uh, so at this point I could begin scanning. Another thing I can do is load my items. This gives me an on hand inquiry of what is there in that doc one bin. So we see those three items in those quantities. As I wanna put those away, I could scan, I could again, use my finger to select this. I select that 10, 10 item. Notice now it comes in, tells me the quantity that I have available that I could move, and it prompts me for that. But down below, you see a list of other bins. So what we're doing is we're giving you the ability uh, to suggest to a user where they might wanna put these items away. So all of these bins have quantities on hand in those. We show that. This top one with a little asterisk, that denotes that that's the preferred bin for that item. Uh, so that's useful information for the person putting it away to know. And then the final column over here is this capacity. So the capacity is, is great information as well. It's actually gonna drive two things. One is this, um, uh, showing me what can fit into that particular bin of that item. 
And then the second thing, and I'll bounce out to in a second, um, it's a minimum and a maximum quantity on these items and bin combinations. Therefore, you can utilize that for replenishments. So if you have the overstock bins, we can actually trigger a replenishment to let you know, or your users know, when they need to move inventory down. So as I tell it the quantity I want to put away, the next screen wants me to scan to validate that bin. Uh, this is an important step. You always want to scan this so that your, your inventory is accurate. So as I go to the bin that I want to put it away into, I'll scan it with my device. We'll get a success message at the bottom, letting me know that it's been submitted. And now as it loops back, you'll see that line's going to be deprecated from this list because it's no longer on hand in this particular bin. So let's do this. Let's bounce out real quick to an inventory item. So if I go to that lot controlled item, um, here we are. You can see that there's an RF Smart tab. And down here, I've, I've set up, these are all bins associated to this particular item, but this particular bin has a minimum and a maximum set on it. So this 500 is an important thing. So as I go to put this one away, it's going to prompt me for a lot number because I'm putting it away and it's a lot controlled item. But the next screen shows, there we go. 50 on hand and 450 as a capacity. So what we do is take that maximum quantity, subtract the on hand, and that derives the capacity. The minimum side of this is what derives a replenishment. So we have a script, it's built already. You just tell it how often you want it to run. But what it does is it looks at this item, this bin and the on hand combination. If it's at or below that minimum, it triggers a bin replenishment. And then from the device perspective, the users can see that, um, that there's work to be done and go ahead and execute that. So let me put this away and I'll show you exactly what that looks like from a device perspective. Okay, so I'm gonna back out and you'll see there's a bin replenishment transaction and then notice even these little bubbles out here. So this transaction would let me know if that was, if I needed to move it down, uh, but that number is a new task notification. So as, as your system runs those scripts, if there's new replenishments that are found, it'll actually appear in a number out by this bubble. So you can see that if you go down to sales order picking, there's a six there, there's six sales orders that need to be picked. So it can actually inform your users that there are replenishments to be done. Okay. So as you look, oh, I clicked on one here, let me back up and get out of this. Um, one thing I just wanted to point out, there's a plethora of inventory type transactions, whether it be just a bin transfer, a bin inquiry, um, an item lookup, we can show a lot of things with that, give you the capabilities to reprint labels uh, and so forth. So, so there's no shortage of inventory type transactions. But what I want to do is I want to jump down to sales order picking, so the fulfillment side of the business. Um, so as you look at it, you'll see that we've got quite a few options as far as sales order picking. Um, but in short, what we've got is the ability to do single order picking. And then with bulk and multiple, we give you the capability to pick multiple orders at once. So think of us as consolidating multiple orders into a single pick ticket so that the user can make an efficient path through the facility to pick multiple orders. The fundamental difference between the two is that bulk, you're picking in bulk. So if all these six orders are for one item is on all six of those orders, it's just going to give me a, a large number. I need to pick a total of 24 for those six orders. And then you're responsible for sorting it out once you've picked everything uh, back into the orders. Whereas multiple, Think of it almost more as tote picking. So as I go to pick for the first order, it tells me I need three. I scan that item, then I need to tell it which order I picked it for. That's extremely important for serialized and lot controlled items because that gives us the ability to have that traceability. So we're putting the right serial numbers on the right fulfillment records or the right lot numbers on the right fulfillment records. Uh, so know that those are options um, that you can utilize. And again, a lot of people take this as a crawl, walk, run approach. So they'll start with single order picking, and then as their pickers become more uh, familiar with the product and the process, they'll open it up and let them pick more than one order at a time, uh, because it does eventually save time in the picking process. So to show you what it looks like from the inside, I'll go into this sales order picking and notice it prompts for that sales order number. Um, at this point, you'll still have a pick ticket. So that pick ticket gets printed, have the barcode uh, of the sales order on that pick ticket so that the user can just scan that. So as I scan it, you'll see it's going to bring in the list of items that need to be picked. Uh, the important thing here is the bin associated to it. So if you have bins turned on, we're actually going to provide these to you in an alphanumeric sort based on that bin number. So the goal is to provide an efficient pick path through your facility. Um, if you don't have bins turned on, 
the bin won't be there and the list of items will just be there for the user and they can go through and pick in any order. I can still pick in any order I choose to, um, but again, the point of reference being the top line and that's the first one in my path to the facility. So it's time to pick, it's prompting me for the item. So I could go there, once I get there, go ahead and scan that item. The next screen wants me to tell it um, the bin that I'm at. So just because it's in this item doesn't mean that's the only, or in this bin, doesn't mean that's the only place I have to pick it from. So I could technically look at this Alt Bins button. And if I click on that, you'll see there's quite a few bins that this is available in. What we're gonna do is to validate that the bin you scan has quantities on hand in that bin. If it doesn't, it won't let you pick from there. Um, in this case, I'll go ahead and scan the appropriate bin, and then you'll see that it passes through to the quantity screen. So it's telling me at the top right to pick three. I'll tell it I picked three, and I'll hit next to move along. Now that turns green, similar to what you saw on receiving, and moves to the bottom. So I'll pick the second one quickly. As I do, everything's green. And the remaining portion of this on the on the back side is the submit button up top. As soon as I click the submit button, what we're doing is we're actually creating that item fulfillment record and putting it into that picked status. Um, so from there, um, depending upon your nature of your shipping, you can then utilize your, your shipping solution or whatever it may be to update that status through to packed and shipped and so forth. Um, but we're creating the record and putting it into a picked status for you. Um, one last thing that we'll offer you before it, it pushed us through is we'll give you that capability to print a pa uh, packing slip directly from the device as well. So I can tell it the printer I want to trigger that to, and it's the NetSuite packing slip that will actually execute and generate for you. Okay, so with a few minutes left here, what I want to get to is the counting, just so you can get, grasp what we're um, providing for you from a counting perspective. So if I scroll down in my menu, you'll see what we've done. We've actually created a brand new type of counting. So it's not the cycle count that's inside of NetSuite. We call it stock counts. And you can see here, there's a couple of options for you. There's a regular stock count, there's the stock count directed and a stock count dynamic. Um, if I had to liken these to different things, the stock count, I would consider that a planned full physical because what we're doing, we would create an empty count sheet and then the user would be responsible for telling it, I'm at this bin, I'm counting this item and blindly I counted 50 then I move to the next bin and so forth. The caveat is it has to be created, that empty count sheet has to be created up front. Dynamic is kind of a random count or an unplanned inventory. So with that, instead of ever having to come into the system to create a count, you can dynamically create that count. To show you what I mean. If I come in here, you'll see a button here, create a new dynamic stock count. The last one on that list was a stock count directed um, really, that's probably the most popular because what this is, is this is going to direct the user on where to go and what to count, and then they'll get there and blindly count it. So what the way this is created, and I've got a tab here, this is the same way you would create um, the regular stock count. You would select this create empty count sheet, submit it, and that would give me that count ID to go forward with. With the directed, if I choose the use directed, notice I now have the capabilities to utilize the rest of these filters tell it the exact items that I want on the count. So whether that be to utilize the next count date on that item and location um, combination, um, the item classifications, you can do that. You could use a from bin and to bin range and we'll bring in all items that are located between that bin range. Um, but the other nice thing is the custom filters. So the customize button gives me the ability to add any field from the item record. So if you have a kind of a custom way that you group your items together to be counted, and that information is in the system, you could add it here. So maybe that's class. I could select a particular class and it'll only bring in those items with that class. But once you've selected your criteria and you apply those filters, what it does is it queries out to the system to find those items that match that criteria. It's exactly what I've done here. So we can see this. All I've got to do is tell it the particular one or ones that I want on this count and then submit it and it's going to create that. So I got to hit apply filters one more time. this and come back. I had that created earlier. There we 
All right, so let's do this. Let's bounce out. So I do actually have um, some slides that I can show you on this and kind of give you a better dialogue of what's going to happen. So let me pull those over to the screen and we'll go through it that way. Here we go. So let me just pass through these. There we go. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you'd select your accounts, and then as you go through, this is going through the whole process. So really what we're doing is, once you tell it the lines that are gonna go on the account, uh, and you submit that, we bring back those, and we bring back an on-hand quantity at that exact point in time the account was created. What these slides are showing is how you can do the real-time counting. So let's just say that I created an account at 8 a.m., and then I've got all these sales orders that need to be picked. This is showing me a sales order. So it gives me that capability to go ahead and continue to pick even though the count's created. Um, so it's just showing the device perspective of it. It's pretty animated. Um, this is what it looks like on the device to count these things. It's going to prompt me and tell me to go to this bin to count that item. Um, so once you've done that, let's get it over to the count screen. So this is what we're referring to. So the on hand was created earlier in the day, but when I got there to count it, I counted four. And the reason I counted four was because someone picked in between those two uh, occurrences. So from there, some more automation. When I go to complete that, well, the slides just didn't do me justice here. Um, the concept is, well, I'm offline. Hopefully you guys are still hearing me. Okay, I'll pretend that you are. Um, so once the count's done, you have that capability to go in and approve by line if you choose to, uh, or you can actually um, send it back out to a recount, often the same screen. So uh, I don't have that screen here to show you, but if I did, it would be just as simple as selecting which lines you want to approve versus selecting the lines that you want to send back out so it's not an all or nothing approach anymore. Hey, Dathan, we just want to check and see if you are still online with us just to make sure we're not having any technical difficulties. Kaylin, are you, can you, can anyone hear? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. We were just checking to make sure okay. you were still able well, to press. 
my apologies. I had an offline message and then now it just came back online. No um, problem. Yep, so it, it looks like my computer system might still be offline because it wasn't able to access the count. Um, but again, just to kind of reiterate where I was, I know we're close on time here. Um, the, the values in the counting are that ability to um, select custom searches or custom filters in order to determine the items that go on the count. Then once you get into the count, it's that ability to, to reconcile um, only the lines you want to approve and then the ability to create recounts for the items that you don't. Um, so as you go through that process, it's, it's a, a streamlined process and to make it all better for everyone, if there is a time and chance that you'd like to see more or learn more about that, feel free to reach out to us and I'm happy to do a demonstration customized with your, your data. All right, thanks, Stephen. Uh, now I would like to go over a few follow-up items and then we're gonna move into our question and answer portion of the webcast. Our webcast today is part of GSI's free ongoing educational webcast series on NetSuite. Our webcasts are listed on the screen. To view our most up-to-date schedule, please visit getgsi.com forward slash NetSuite webcasts. GSI provides extensive free educational resources for the NetSuite community, including our weekly educational webcasts, our monthly newsletter, our online resource center where you can access our on-demand webcasts, white papers, etc and on-site and virtual workshops. If you would like to sign up for our weekly email reminders for upcoming webcasts or create an account to access our resource center, go to getgsi.com, go to platforms on the main menu, select NetSuite, and then select the appropriate link on the left. While I see that we've already had several questions submitted online, I would like to remind everyone that if you would still like to submit a question, you can do so using the questions panel in the GoToWebinar console window on the right side of your screen. If you minimized your console earlier, please click the left arrow to redisplay the questions panel. Okay, our first question comes from Tyler who asks, are 2D barcodes supported with RF Smart? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, so with the barcodes and the different um, symbologies that you can have, that's really a, a support question of the device, but any more devices support just about any symbology possible. Um, and kind of as an example, during this demonstration for my bins, I actually am using QR barcodes and for my items, I use a data matrix barcode. Uh, so absolutely the two dimensional are supported. All right, thanks, Dathan and Tyler. Our next question comes from Kathy, who asks, does each RF Smart user require a NetSuite license? Okay, that that's an interesting question. So with with our product, we actually have two license licensing models that we support. One is just that. So if you have uh, NetSuite licenses for your, your warehouse users today, we do have a license that is a one-to-one -one with that. Um, if you have a large force out in your warehouse and they never need inside of NetSuite, we do offer what we call an enhanced license that does run off of one NetSuite license. So really it's it's either or it could be a one-to-one -one or you have that ability to have just multiple RF Smart license piggybacking off of a single NetSuite license. All right. Thanks, Dathan and Kathy. Our next question is from Olivia who asks, which devices can be used with RF Smart? I have seen a ton of different devices. There's really only one criteria that we need, and that's a modern browser. Um, so since there's no software actually on these devices, the way we're connecting is the same way you would through NetSuite. It's a, it's a web app, essentially. So um, the requirement is a browser similar to a Google Chrome or a Safari or Firefox that need to be on it. So whether it's a tablet, um, a computer, or one of these devices that are more similar to a cell phone, um, all that matters is that it's HTML5 browser uh, to support that. Okay, thanks, Dathan, and thanks, Olivia. That appears to be the end of the questions. Thank you, Dathan, and everyone for your questions today.
As a follow-up from today's webcast, we ask that you complete a short one-minute survey when you exit. You will be receiving an email with a link to our resource center on our website where you can access the recording from today's webcast as well as a copy of the presentation. After today's webcast, we will do the drawing for the $25 Amazon gift card and anyone who attended the entire webcast will be eligible. We will notify the winner. If you have any follow-up questions, you can contact Dathan or I, and we will get back to you. Our contact information is located on the screen. Thanks again for attending our presentation, and have a great day.